All right, now we get a chance to see our towns from the ground level, talk a little about the campaign, and meet our main character, Captain Miller, who's been inserted behind enemy lines and is currently sporting 2030's very latest civilian style. So, Armour 3 is set in a semi-post-apocalyptic future war, uh, a small battle in a much greater clash of civilizations. Uh, the war has been raging for too long now, and the world is in its corresponding state, mostly ruins. As part of the single-player campaign, the A3 team plan to add RPG, or adventure elements, involving things like getting information from the locals via conversations. Captain Miller is alone in enemy territory and forced to cooperate with a, a range of characters, some more palatable than others. You'll be able to get directions, important information, world background, or even side missions from the locals. Here, Miller's just received information about a certain Nikos from one of the locals. It's worth taking a second to notice the level of detail from the villages, uh, the same places that you saw from above, but this is how they look from the ground. So now we're approaching one of the NPCs, Nikos, a local profiteer. Uh, he's a good example of how the main NPC should look in the game, richly detailed and quite expressive. Here he's making excuses for not delivering some of the weapons he's promised and sends Miller off to check on his driver. That affords us the perfect opportunity to explore the village. It's worth mentioning that unlike most first person shooter games, Armour 3 is not a corridor experience. You can walk around through any building. Uh, that means backyards, shady alleyways, backtracks. They're all designed with a similar attention to detail as the main avenues and military bases. The campaign will reflect this, featuring an uh, open sandbox style gameplay, uh, offering the player an unsurpassed level of freedom, uh, the kind that you come to expect from the Armour series.